while it pains me to even talk about this movie, <clears throat> it's called The Happy Time Murders. And it's a film that stars Melissa McCarthy. She plays a detective. Her partner, or had been a partner, he's no longer with the police force, is a private eye named Phil. He is a puppet. And this is the world of Happy Time Murders. It's a world where puppets, puppets exist and humans exist. And the humans discriminate against the puppets. They are you know, anti-puppet in a, a million different ways. That would, that would be an okay movie. You know, you could, you could see that, uh, you know, having a message, you know, about you know, bias and that type of thing. But this is a movie that has the puppets that were, look just like the creatures from Sesame Street. The movie is directed by Brian Henson, who is the son of Jim Henson. And I think Jim Henson is dead now. And for some reason, Brian Henson agreed to take these puppets that are so charming and so endearing and stick them in the middle of an R-rated movie. I mean, it is a hard R, which means it stretches the limits of the R rating. The puppets, you know, uh, are involved in it's about every four-letter word that you, you know, ever want to hear. They're crude, they're lewd, uh, they're sexually active, and here, what worries me is that kids are going to see, number one, Melissa McCarthy, you know, she was on Like and Molly on TV, and everybody loves her. Uh, kids may be drawn to the movie because of her. Then you've got these adorable puppets, you know, who they've seen on Sesame Street growing up, and, and they'll want to see them. And there'll be some parents who will not take the time or make the effort to look and see that this is an R-rated movie. R-rated, you know, not G, not PG, not even PG-13. It is R-rated, and they either will be, you know, ignorant of the fact of the R rating, or they just don't care. They want to see it, and they take the kids in there. But kids will get to see this movie, and it is just a a, a mashup, you know, of Melissa McCarthy at her crudest. I mean, she, you know, she's spouting words, you know, as as of profanity and crudeness as quickly as she can get them out of her mouth. And then these pornographic puppets that are, are, are taking place in the story about uh, a television show that everybody loved called Happy Time. And for some reason, someone is going around killing the puppets and the people who were involved in this show. And, you know, about halfway through, you're thinking, I don't really care anymore. I don't, you know, I've seen, I've seen enough of this to last me a lifetime. What I have seen, I can never unsee again. And what I've seen is obscene. So you just, you just think, let the movie get over. And why did, why would Melissa McCarthy involve herself in a movie like this? I mean, it's, it's it, the whole selling point of the movie is how crude it is. It's not, oh, it's got a good story, or it's got some really great jokes, or this is going to be a... You know, when she read the script, why didn't it, you know, it should have screamed at her, you know, run, hide, you know, don't get involved with this in any way. But she didn't. She she jumped right in there. And then there are other uh, two other good actresses, Elizabeth Banks. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that familiar with her, but She's been in a lot of movies, you recognize her, and Maya Rudolph from Saturday Night Live. Both of them, what are they doing in this movie? You know, they're too good for this movie. Joel McHale is in the movie as an FBI agent, but he's not that good an actor anyway, so I don't care about him. But Melissa McCarthy, Elizabeth Banks, and Maya Rudolph, I do care about them, and I wonder if they thought it was funny. Did, was there an inside joke going on that maybe I just wasn't in them, uh, or never got. I never got beyond the crudeness of the movie. Uh, I just never did. And why Brian Henson would take you know, the creatures that his father had, had, had built a lifetime legacy on and then push them into something like this just blows my mind. 
why would he do that? You know, what, what was his purpose? I hope the money was good, you know, because that had to have been the only reason that he would, you know, tarnish, you know, his father's work in such a way. But the movie's rated R is, you know, for profanity, violence, crude activity, sexual conduct, etc., etc., etc. So it earns its R rating. I scored it two out of ten. That's that's the best I can give it. Two, uh, you know, and that was basically Maya Rudolph. I, I did think at times she was funny. So Happy Time Murders, rated R, Melissa McCarthy plus pornographic puppets. And I gave it a 2 out of 10. I ended my week with watching the movie AXL. Axel. And this one is another boy and his dog movie, except this time it's a robotic dog. Uh, you know, the, the, the main character uh, played by, let me see if I can get his name, Alex Neustadler. Neustadler. Uh, I'd never seen him in a movie before, but he plays a, a teenager, you know, who lives with his father, played by Thomas Jane. Uh, he's a dirtback writer. He does off-country competition, I think it's called, and, when, and you know, he races bikes, etc. And this main competition is a guy named Sam, played by Alex McNichol. He's rich. His father's played by Ted McGinley. They have kind of a rivalry going. Uh, also, there's rivalry over a girl named Sarah. She's played by Becky G. Beautiful young actress, you know, and, and really plays her part well. But the focus of the movie is on a robotic dog that uh, the kid, the main kid, finds. He discovers him in the, you know, like a scrapyard, and he's there, and how, why, it never is explained, but the dog has been created by the government. It has all these super abilities that it can do. It can, you know, it's really created as a, a, a dog of war uh, to do things that dogs, human, you know, actual dogs do, but then to be more of a killing machine also. And, but the boy doesn't know that. All he knows is he sees this big mechanical dog and he gets him out and is able to, excuse me, nose is itching, uh, able to, to bring him up to full power. And of course, the government is searching for this dog. They want to get it back. It's, uh, you know, millions of dollars have been, you know, funneled into creating this, this robot dog. And the boy is, and, and, and the girl are trying to protect the dog, you know, from, from being found, you know, they, they want to, they, 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 the dog has bullet holes uh, in his armor where he's been shot at it and they've been testing, you know, the abilities of the dog called Axel, but they've just got some you know, auxiliary experimental, etc. cetera, uh, that come up with the initials AXL. <clears throat> the movie is fun. You know, you just sit there and watch the boy and this robotic dog and, and see the adventures that they get into, and then there's the government coming after them, plus there's this other guy named Sam, who's his rival, who finds out he's he's got this robotic dog, and then he wants to destroy it for some reason, so there's conflict there. You know, it's fun. You can sit there and, and you know, the hour and a half or two hours just kind of go past you. It never explains things. It never explains how the boy has this ability to um, you know, repair the, the robotic dog in any way. You know, I know that there, it says that there's you know, information provided that the boy gets a whole, you know, gets you know, aware of that through the, his computer, you know, going and finding information that gives him you know, the ability to help repair the dog. And also the dog has things inside itself that, that helps it repair itself. So you have all of that going on. And like I say, it's entertaining, it's not that logical, it has kind of an enigmatic ending that you can look for. But, you know, it's average. You know, again, 
Uh, this movie is rated PG, uh, you know, very, very mild profanity, just you know, a little bit of violence with the dog, but PG rated. You know, I scored it again, just like I did Alpha about the boy and the wolf. This one's you know, boy and the robot dog. I scored it five out of ten. So you know, it, it's just right across the board. I mean, it's not anything really great. It's not anything really bad. It's just something to watch.